Hi and welcome to my tutorial on how to draw a black horse in coloured pencils. To start off with I loosely block in the dark spots on the eye and around it using my black pencil before getting some of the brown colours in the eye. I keep layering with my browns and my blacks to start getting that deep colour in in that area. I put a little white spot underneath the eye. That's the tear line in the eye and it always comes up quite bright so you've got to make sure to put the white down there so that you don't lose that white highlight along that spot. I keep layering with Bistri, Burnt Sienna and Nougat over this area of the face. Um, also with my black pencil and I put layers down keeping them light pressure. Then when I've got several light layers down I go over it using a paintbrush with an odorless solvent and I don't have much on the brush and I usually do when I paint it's in small circles or strokes which follow the direction of the fur or the hair on the animal. At this point I'm just mainly getting in a good layer of dark colours to get the dark shadows in because it is a black horse on a white paper it takes quite a lot of layers to get that dark into the paper so that I get the deep rich colour that I'm looking for in the end product. This means that I'm not focusing on the details at this point. I'm just loosely blocking in the colours in the different areas. And um, I'll come back and do the details later. I start working on the mane and with the mane, you focus on clumps of hair. You don't try and look at it as individual strokes because otherwise you'll be there forever. You look at the big clumps and where the shadows fall for those clumps of hair rather than the little tiny individual hairs. I used my white luminance pencil to add a few little highlights in before adding more layers of black to really try and get that depth of colour that I want in the end. I continue working down the neck of the horse. I've had to put a piece of tracing paper onto my hand to try and stop me smudging the dark colour across on the clean paper. And I really need to get this half of the portrait done before I do any more of the face because otherwise I will be constantly working over the area that I've already done. As you can see, the white luminance pencil is really good for getting those little highlights in where the light is hitting on that side of the face. I continue blocking in the dark colours. Later on you'll see I actually come back and add a mane in this area going down the full length of the neck because the photo I was working from had the mane flipped over onto the other side of the neck for that section but it didn't look right once I'd blocked it all in so I added a mane in. I'm quite loose with how I colour in this section. I'm not too worried about my strokes. It's on the neck area where there'll be less detail anyway so it tends to just look blurry when after I've blended it all out. I do tend to use a fair amount of um, the solvent on the brush at this part because it helps move the colour around quite a lot. So I use a lot less on different layers. But when you've got more pigment on the paper, you want less on your brush. Now that the neck is mostly finished or blocked in, I come back to start adding in some of the details on the face. Um, I pay closer attention to where those little veins are on the face, those little tiny bumps that really define how the muscles are across the face of the horse and in horses they are very defined so that is really important to pay close attention to. I've used a little bit of Indian red along the side of the face because he, this particular horse does have uh, some nice more reddy brown markings in that area and once I go over it in black some more it will really come up to a nice colour. I keep layering, adding more black on top of the other colours um, as this horse is very dark 
um, I have to keep adding more and more black layers to get the rich colour that I'm looking for. I've had to hype up the contrast and brightness in the reference photo to figure out where the shadows are on the right side of his face because in my photo it's all dark but using Photoshop I've hyped up the brightness so that I can see where those subtle highlights are on the right side of his face and so that I could add them into the portrait otherwise it would just all be dark and it wouldn't look as realistic. As you can see that last blending um, really made the colours become quite rich in the portrait. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. See you next time.